Welcome back to episode 46 of Posture Labs and Alignment Fundamentals. My name is Emma. Today we're going to be doing a really fun one called Parsva Bakasana or Side Crow Pose. This is an arm balance, so I definitely recommend being warmed up before. Uh, warm up your wrists, your spine, your shoulders, and definitely do some twists. Maybe even some hip openers just to be safe. I have plenty of classes where we do Parsva Bakasana as well, and it's usually towards the end of the class because you want to make sure your body is fully prepared for these poses. So you might also like to check out some of those classes. I will link them below. Um, let's go ahead and so I'm not going to warm us up for this pose because I'm kind of counting on you to do that. This is just the pose tutorial. So maybe while I'm explaining, make sure you get some twists in, uh, warm up your shoulders, especially if you're, it's in the morning and you haven't really done much yet. Uh, I like to start this pose in a toe stand. So your butt is towards your heels, ankle bones hug in, knees going forward. Now from here, we're taking a twist. So think like twisted chair, utkatasana. Um, I'm gonna be twisting to my right. Oftentimes, I do do this facing the side of the mat so that my hands can face towards the front of the mat. A lot of people, eventually, you wanna jump your feet back into Chaturanga Dandasana. That's why I like to set up facing the side of the mat, but if you're just practicing the pose, it honestly does not matter where you're facing. For the sake of this though, if you're facing the side of your mat, my cueing might make a little bit more sense. So I'm facing the left side of my mat and I'm gonna be twisting to my right. That means I'm hooking my left elbow, preferably left tricep outside of my right thigh. Now, my fingertips are pointing towards the front of my mat. As I do this, my left knee likes to go forward. I'm gonna try to keep the knees together. I'm really going to try to get my, this outer right thigh as high up on my left tricep as I can. If I'm closer to my elbow, it's going to be a little bit harder to balance. I'm also going to feel more pressure in my elbow. So the higher I go, the better. Now, ideally, I'm not using my right arm really at all. I'm using my right hand to support me, but nothing should be resting on my right elbow. So I'm going to show you the correct way to do the pose, and then I'm going to teach you a step or a kind of like a crutch, a way to do the pose. I'm gonna grip with my finger pads so I have less pressure in my wrists. Start to lean your weight forward, come high on your toes, keep trying to hug the legs together, tip your weight forward, and then let your legs come a little bit off of the mat. Now, I, you can either gaze down or gaze over to the left. Keep squeezing the legs together, grip with your finger pads. My right elbow is not supporting anything, but it's still hugging in. So maybe I'll, sh I'll show you from the front as well what I mean. So. This right elbow is not going to be supporting anything. I'm going to lean my weight forward, right elbow hugging in, but not supporting me. Now, if you're new to this pose or new to yoga, but you want to give it a shot, and that's just way too much, I got you. Just, you know, as you build the strength, work away from this. So, uh, you can also use your right elbow as a crutch. That way, the entire outside of your right thigh will be like a shelf. It's probably going to feel a lot more stable. Your face will be closer to the mat, just a heads up. So I'll show you from the side and then from the front as well. Maybe I'll actually face the other side though. So my fingertips are pointing towards the front of my mat. I'm gripping with my finger pads, but this time I'm going to bring my right elbow in a lot and then kind of lift my right hip like almost my right glute towards my right elbow. So it's resting as well. Keep my legs together and lean my weight forward. Now I'm looking at down at my mat or over to the left. So I feel a little bit more stable here, but it also kind of doesn't feel that nice to have your elbow digging into your hip. So it's challenging in a different way. Eventually the goal is to lift that right hip away. It requires a bit more core and oblique strength, but I think you can do it. Now let's give that a shot on the other side. So if I'm facing the front of my mat, I'm gonna turn my knees off the right side of my mat. That means I'm in a toe stand facing the right side of my mat. I'm gonna take a prayer twist to my left, hooking my right tricep outside of my left thigh with the fingertips pointing towards the front of the mat. Keep the knees together as much as possible, really, really high on the toes. Shift my weight into my hands, grip with your finger pads. Keep hugging your left elbow in without letting your thigh touch your elbow. If you wanna do that modification, you're gonna bring your left elbow towards your left hip and use your left thigh as kind of a shelf. Your face will be closer to the mat when you do that. Now, this is a really challenging pose. Not only is it an arm balance, it requires a really deep twist. 
If you can't get that twist, unfortunately, you won't be able to do the pose. Um, I'm not saying you never will be able to do the pose, but it does require that twist. Otherwise, you won't be able to set your arms up. So work on that. What can you do to work on that? Twisted chair pose, ukatasana. You can do really any sort of twisting, especially prayer twists. Um, low lunge, high lunge prayer twists opening your arms in prayer twists, that's all really gonna get you the leverage you need to set up this pose. Um, eventually, like I mentioned, some people may like to jump their feet back. There's also other options you can go for here, such as Ekapada Kaundinyasana. You can extend your legs. Um, I'll go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to take a toe stand facing the left side of my mat prayer twist to the right, grip with my finger pads, lean my weight forward, Parsva Bakasana. Maybe I wanna extend my bottom leg out to the left. My top leg is my left leg back. So the top leg goes towards the back of the mat, the bottom leg kicks out off of the mat. Then I'm gonna bring my feet back together. I'm gonna to look down, shift my weight into the heels of my hands, and shoot my feet back. Chaturanga to upward facing dog. This like jumping back from crow pose is challenging, but you're even closer to the mat here. So at least in crow pose, you're a little bit higher up. You can kind of arch back like a rainbow. Here, you're pretty close to the mat, so you just have to shoot your feet back. There is a chance you hit your toes or hit your knee or just flop onto your belly. I've definitely been there. It's totally fine. Uh, there's not really another way to learn besides doing that and probably failing a few times, so that's okay. Uh, just make sure you're careful, you're not pushing yourself too far. The uh, tip I do really want to highlight is you really want to get this twist nice and deep, snuggled in there. So like you're in twisted chair, you know, you could just do elbow kind of on the, on the right outside of your thigh, but you're really trying to get in there. Like the thigh is going as high up into your tricep as you can. So there's a lot more twist here than there is here. There's a lot more twist here than there is here. And it's gonna be a way harder to do an arm balance with just that minimal amount of twist. So make sure you practice your twisting first. If you have any other tips, tricks, comments, or questions about this pose, make sure to let me know in the comments. Again, I'll make sure to link some of my actual, you know, vinyasa classes where we do side crow pose so you can see like some appropriate prep and how I would cue it in a class. Thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you back next week for another tutorial.